Welcome to another week here at the Tolerin. I think this is going to be a pretty short video this week um, as I am by myself and I don't have a lot of time this weekend um, to work on the house so it's gonna be a little shorter. I'm running dryer cable and also am installing the dryer vent um, or at least the pipe for it so that we um, can kind of finish the laundry room and be done with that and we can actually move on to the next um, next area. Uh, one of the other things that I am doing this weekend is I'm going to talk to an electrician. Um, we'll see how that goes but um, finally I have at least found somebody who's willing to come by and talk through the sub panels with me and see what we can do there to get them connected and hooked up to the uh, main panel. So we have two projects for the laundry room here. Today we need to get the dryer cabling done. So we had to add the wire and everything for the dryer. And then the other uh, part that I want to get done today is running the vent for the dryer also. So we we'll have to draw some holes and then run the vent um, in the ceiling, in the dining room ceiling um, between the joists out to the outside of the building. So let's get started. So now that we ran the cable, we can install the vent. So the duct work that we need to run, we are going to use four inch uh, uh, metal pipe, rigid pipe. I'm going to mount the first one a 90 degree right there at the end of the wall. And instead of just going straight down, I am going down in an angle around like 40, 45 degrees and then cut out the floor right here and then what we will do is we will run along the joists the joists um, in the ceiling underneath us are running this way so we're gonna run right in parallel with the joist and we're going all the way to the end of the bathroom over on the side and underneath the uh, windows we are going to vent it so first thing i'm gonna do is um, i know i am on a joist right here so I am just gonna figure out how wide we want to make this section and we're gonna cut the boards out so that we can just go straight down. In case you're wondering why I'm not screwing these um, pieces together, I don't want to have anything penetrating into the pipe uh, because when you have a dryer and even the dryer, ha even though the dryer has a filter, um, a net in it that keeps all the lint from going down the um, in the pipes. There are still once in a while that goes, uh, some goes by and that's why one of the reasons why you want to always clean out um, at least once a year, you want to clean out um, your dry vents. But because some of the lint go still goes through and if you have screws or something penetrating, the lint just collects on those and then eventually you go get a clog. So the less um, 
th penetrations that you're making in these pipes, the better it is. Here you can tell the ductwork is coming out right here in a 45 or almost 45 degree coming out from the floor and then obviously the dryer is going to be on the other side so it allows us to connect the dryer to a vent to the outside um, and then obviously you're wondering this is obviously a closet that I'm sitting in here um, how I'm um, how I'm going to finish this so what we are doing is we're putting a box around it and just putting drywall on it this is since it is a closet it's not gonna be in the way we will have the close hang uh, clothesline hanging uh, the close hanging right here so if there's a small little box at the bottom it's not really in the way so that's okay So now that we have a hole here, we need to obviously connect the pipe and push it all the way through. Right now, I'm just gonna leave it long. I have a end cap, but since we still have to redo the siding up there, I am not really concerned, so I'm just gonna let it run out a little. The electrician just left and we had a pretty good conversation. Um, he said he's willing to help me. Um, he's not feeling 100% comfortable of doing the outside um, upgrade that we might have to do. But since we have two actual service lines coming into the building, one of them has a meter in it, the other one doesn't right now. So we do already have two panels in the basement that are 200, uh, 200 amps. So he's at least willing to do all of the work in the basement to the sub panels just splitting it out from those two panels um, i still have to find somebody then um, who's willing to upgrade the outside and then also help me maybe taking it down he said he might be willing to take it down as long as we're leaving it something like that so i am going to have a conversation with the electrical provider to see what it would be if i have two meters on the same location if that means i have to pay two times the connection fee or not so those kind of things I'm trying to figure out still, but um, it's at least good news. So he's helping me run the, the main cables, going to put the breaker, the main breaker for each one of the panels in, and then me and Thomas can do all the actual breakers in the box, but um, at least he's gonna help us to supply the sub panels with power. Um, one of the things he recommended is instead of just using the sub panel things, we actually plant a 
a main breaker into each one of the sub panels. It's not a requirement because you normally have a breaker also in the main breaker box for this sub panel, but he recommended it from the perspective of if you ever have an emergency on one of the floors and you want to just take that entire floor down, um, you just stop it. You don't have to run down all the way to the basement. You can just flip the main breaker on an entire panel and then the entire floor is out without running down into the basement and doing the same thing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some research and see um, which size of breaker I have to get for exactly this panel that can upgrade it to more of a main uh, um, standard primary panel but so that's my homework and then I have also no, one more homework to do um, and that is measuring all the different lengths of cables that we will need from um, the breaker down to the main panel um, he's going to organize us the cable the, the right sizes for each but he wants to know what the, the length of the runs will be. So he gave that homework to me so that um, he can just order the cable. So we are going to do that right now before we probably finish for today. Um, and then since I don't have time to come on Sunday, I think this is gonna be it for the working besides um, just the measuring here. So what's the plan for the future here? Uh, what's coming next? Um, I probably still have about two weeks of electrical before we can call it finished. Um, we obviously have to, now that we hired the electrician, we need to connect these sub panels with him together um, to the main breaker panels. We have to then um, also finish all the breakers in the boxes. And in the third floor, I want to obviously get started I need I don't want to finish it all but we at least want to get started in the electrical in the uh, third floor as we're not moving into the third floor right away but all the um, electrical that needs to run underneath the floors or all the electrical that needs to run over to the heat pump we obviously need to do that as we need to um, obviously provide um, heat and cooling in the second and third floor even if we are not living in there yet um, and then um, next thing there is obviously after electrical is done we will have to do smart wiring uh, network wiring in the house and also um, finish the plumbing i want to when i get the electric uh, electrical inspector out I also want to get the plumbing inspector out at least on the plumbing to just give me a thumbs up or a not so that I can then glue them all together. Um, so that's the next step there. We also want to obviously get started on the windows. Um, I haven't even ordered them yet. Um, so that's and I want to do a test fit first. So I'm going to order two or three windows only. Um, figure out exactly how we're going to finish them out and then um, order the rest of them because at that point it's gonna go fast. I know exactly what to do um, Also when, before I start the windows I want to take some of the vinyl off on the outside so that way I can kind of see how bad in bad shape um, On the walls where there's still vinyl how in bad shape the um, old wood siding is my expectation is that it's in a bad uh, shape is just because They wouldn't have put vinyl over it if the wood was still in uh, wasn't uh, rotting or what's warping completely and anything so expectations there are taking off the entire siding of the house eventually and um, putting wood siding again original wood siding on um, obviously not original wood but just traditional wood getting new wood and finishing it the way it would have been done uh, before um, and then when that is done we can do the spray forming of the house um, I don't want to do the spray forming before I do uh, the siding just because um, I feel like it um, we have all these penetrating nails that the siding is gonna do um, and we might have to fix some of the cladding on the outside because of that um, if I spray foam and there are some rotten wood pieces they won't come down, come off they will just it will be really hard to take them off 
and have a continuous um, insulation still. So I wanna get the outside done before um, I spray foam the house. Um, so that means spray foaming, foaming is probably gonna be in the summer, which is actually probably a good thing because the warmer it is, the better um, spray foaming um, can be installed. It just likes warm temperatures, it expands better um, when there's warm temperatures. So from that perspective, um, waiting until the summer for the, uh, for the insulation, that's a good thing anyways. So like I said, electric, finishing the electrical, doing the plumbing, doing the siding, the windows, and then insulation before we really can even think of doing some of the finishing touches. And in between, somewhere whenever I have time, I will also fit in the network cables. Uh, we want to make the house pretty smart, uh, pretty smart. so a lot of the light switches are gonna get um, smartified. And also, um, I prefer to have network cables run instead of using Wi-Fi all over the um, house, just because it just is more reliable. And also, um, the Cat5, Cat6 cables can be used in the future um, for low voltage applications that um, are other smart applications, even if you don't use it through a Cat6 uh, connector, but you can actually just repurpose those wires. So I am going to run um, at least two wires into each one of the rooms, most likely in a lot of them. There will be actually multiple spots where there will be a double connector. Um, so every bedroom will have at least um, two spots just so depending if where you're gonna put um, a desk in there um, all the the living room of course will get spots at the TV and other places and then even in the in the kitchen I want to do in the area where we may be sitting at the bar or something where we might want to sit um, run some uh, wires there because why not can uh, not have the a, a possibility of hardwiring your device that you might be sitting there on um, and then of course um, making put, putting in security cameras on the outside just on the perimeter of the house um, just um, obviously for security purposes I think it's it's a good thing plus it gives us the peace of mind even if the neighborhood is not um, a dangerous neighborhood it's just uh, peace of mind and you know in case something did, would happen it's just nice to have the cameras. So we're gonna run those, and all those are gonna be network cameras. So therefore, um, I will probably have a lot of, a, a big um, networking closet where all of that comes together. Um, so we have to get that um, planned out. I'm not 100% sure yet where in the house I want to. I am thinking a attic is nice, but then it's also um, not so nice because I have to, if I want to do any work, I run a lot of long cables. But just since it's gonna be the main master there, it's nice from that perspective. But then in the basement, obviously, running it into a utility uh, room is nice. But then I just, again, I would run all the cables just down all the time. Um, but that basement, of course, is has the advantage of, it's probably gonna be the perimeter where the main internet is coming into the building so that would be a short distance to the main router and then to the main switchboard so from there um, keeping those distances short um, is beneficial and having all that equipment in one spot so I'm kind of um, not sure yet what we want to do um, I still haven't even figured out yet what kind of layout on the in the basement we are doing so we have to figure that out before we can figure out where exactly the, the closet could go down there um, so lots of things to still do before we even start on uh, finishing touches like kitchen and like drywall and then doing the trim all the, all the way around. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Um, I know um, lately we have made a lot of progress. This week we didn't, but um, that's just how it goes. So I hope everybody has a wonderful week and I see you when I turn the camera on the next time. Bye!